Yeah, what an extraordinary weekend of events. Where does it leave us now? We've seen kind of eerie calm and, and not a great deal of communication uh, from either side at this point. Uh, that's right. That's exactly where we stand. Um, it was in many ways a dizzying weekend with the events, at times bewildering, uh, things developing quite quickly. And then all of a sudden we have a sudden calm and quiet. Uh, after the deal was announced and confirmed by the Kremlin, we have seen a mostly silent Kremlin since then. Um, we have not seen President Vladimir Putin publicly since he gave his Saturday TV address uh, in which he called the Wagner Group's actions treasonous. Um, even Prigozhin himself, Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the mercenary group, the Wagner Group, he's often boisterous in public, and he has been largely out of public view since then as well, leaving a calm that leaves a certain nervousness, uh, unsettledness from the events over the weekend, and room for focusing on the questions of what does it mean? What are the implications of what transpired over the weekend? And that seems to be where the focus is now. What are we seeing in terms of global reaction so far? Well, we've heard a few. Clearly, this, these events are on the minds of most world leaders right now, with several implications reaching beyond Russia. Um, for instance, we heard from uh, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. He said uh, he was on the morning TV shows, and he said that um, you know this really shows cracks in Putin's regime. Calls it, it's a direct challenge to Putin. But interestingly enough, he also said that it could be an advantage for Ukraine on the battlefield. That highlights the two major questions here. What does this mean for Vladimir Putin? What does it mean for events happening on the battlefield in Ukraine? And like we mentioned earlier, we also know that uh, Russia has kept contact with China. The Chinese Foreign Ministry, of course, saying that it was an internal affair, but they support their actions towards stability. And that, yes, a deputy foreign minister from Russia was in Beijing meeting with his counterparts um, today, uh, on sun or yesterday on Sunday. So that communication is still there. Uh, the Chinese support there, hardly surprising given the way that relationship has tended in recent years. But definitely this is grabbing the attention of world leaders. Yeah, and, and definitely two aspects that we're continuing to watch are the implications for Ukraine and the war effort there, and of course implications for, for that response from Beijing, right? I guess a re reaffirm, reaffirming that, uh, you know, friendship with no limits that we've talked about in the past. But I, I, I do wonder, you know, if calm has been restored for now, what, what, what does this mean for the future of the Wagner Group? Uh, that is actually one of the key questions people are focused on right now moving forward. Um, we do know that as part of the deal, um, Prigozhin has accepted um, uh, exile in Belarus. It was the Belarusian president, an ally of Vladimir Putin, who helped negotiate the deal. Um, we know that the Kremlin said that those that did not participate in the mutiny could sign contracts with the Ministry of Defense. But that is one of the questions. What happens to these other soldiers, both in terms of where do they go, what happens to Wagner, but also what happens on the battlefield in Ukraine if so many of these soldiers who had been uh, some of the more effective fighting forces are suddenly pulled off the battlefield. Um, and these will be the focus of what we expect to learn in the next coming days. Um, and, and as things become clearer in the wake of these uh, events, that will be something that is very closely watched.